Okay, finish topping off your water bottles and that stuff, and please have a seat. And then we'll start off the first meeting of our, hopefully, community here at the Arapahoe State Forest. Just a quick review for you all, not that you really need it, but about two weeks ago, that's when the event, as everyone calls it, happened. Government ended up falling apart. We had chaos in the streets, markets collapsed, bank runs, stores being looted, all hell broke loose. One way or another, we all found our way here. My name is Lee Hoffman. I am an Army veteran. I was working in a warehouse coordinating uh, deliveries and that stuff before everything went to hell. Now, I will outright to admit this, I and my wife and our kids, this was not our first choice of where we were going to bug out to. The plans that we had always had for years was we were going to go to my wife's brother's place out in the country, he had a homestead, but by the time we got there it had been looted, burned, and we found him in his front lawn with his hands tied behind his back and a gunshot to the back of the head. I know it doesn't really matter that much. You know, it's more of a precautionary tale for before stuff happens than now. You know, we're already into it. But we think what occurred is he had had a divorce recently. It was found, finalized about six months ago. His ex-wife was originally into prepping, and that's why we, you know, chose to go to his place to bug out to. Well, she got a promotion at work. She started making more, and he did. He was working as a contractor. And then she had a new group of friends because of her promotion, and she contracted the woke mind virus. And... Who knows at what point, but she somewhere along the way picked up a uh, new boyfriend behind my brother-in-law's back, and in the end they got divorced. He got to keep the house, he got to keep the survival supplies, she got everything else. We suspect that his ex-wife and her boyfriend and probably some uh, homies of his showed up at the place and took out their final revenge against them for being a uh, stupid white guy. I know it doesn't really matter to us, you know, it is more of a precautionary tale for for people for beforehand that, hey, if you're a prepper, you have a divorce, you know, you might want to change where you live at so that your ex doesn't know where those survival supplies are at and so forth. Now, I came here during the first week. We're about two weeks into this SHTF event now. When I got here to the state park, the campground here was being run by a 20-something police deputy from the big city who was here for, with a couple of his friends when everything went down. Well, they took over the camp, they locked down the store, turned it into their own personal little uh, snack bag, and uh, yeah, they were taking whatever they wanted from anyone here. It was a bad situation. When I and my wife pulled in here, they tried making it very obvious to me that they were the ones in charge. We were able to get one of the camping spots and, well, within 24 hours, uh, Officer Friendly sent a couple of his, his, two of his buddies over to our camping site to confiscate our firearms and anything else they felt like it. Altercation ensued. Both of his uh, buddies were on the ground bleeding out and we let them die. Right after that happened, I quickly ran up to the uh, ranger station slash shopette and I found Officer Friendly high as a kite smoking someone's bag of weed 
that he had already confiscated off of someone. Well, one in the face, two in the chest took care of the problem. You know, we started talking at that time that, hey, we need to organize a community. We need to get this put together. So this was decided on. Over the last 48 hours here, me, Doc Rogers over there, uh, EMT from the capital city, and Ranger Smith back there up against the back wall, we did an assessment of the area, find out what's available to us, what the immediate area looks like, you know, how secure is it, so on and so forth. Now, just a quick rundown. For those of you that don't know as much on the area, I know most of you showed up over the past five days or so here. We got the main road here in the park, dirt road off on the west side. Road coming in crosses Bear Creek here. At the end of the road, we got the Ranger office slash little shopette. Uh, we have kept it locked and restricted for a reason, and I'll get to why. We got our loop here. Uh, there's about 40 stalls all around. Shower building up here, which does have uh, heat still for the water because of a propane tank. The power for the building is provided by solar panels. The solar panels also power a water pump outside here. We have a hand pump and a fill pump for RVs and campers. The uh, fill pump is actually hooked up into the power where you uh, turn it on and fill up the water tank inside your camper. As you all know right now, we're inside the storm shelter up here in the corner. This unfortunately was tied into the grid. We have no power in this building. Down on the uh, ranger station here, there is a propane tank on the back which provides heat for water for the restroom, which is on the back corner here, store in front, storeroom here, and the ranger's office is back here. There is a water pump also outside. That one is just a hand pump, as all of you should know. A little bit on the terrain, we got kind of a ridge here that was cut into when they made the road coming in. We got a cluster of trees and bushes down here. And I want to point out that we did find when we were checking through there, there are multiple patches of wild berries. We were finding gooseberries, raspberries in there. And we also found several large mature oaks. The reason that's important is we can uh, collect up the acorns when they're mature. We can dry them, grind them, turn them into flour. So we will be Going through there, cleaning that uh, area up a little bit, we're going to try to encourage those berry patches to grow further. And we're also going to clean up around those oak trees, get the old acorns out of there, so that when the next batch of acorns grow, we can harvest the acorns. Uh, farther down the road here, we do have the rustic campgrounds. It did have 20 sites, one hand pump down there, two restrooms, no power. We did bring the people that were up there in to join us down here. That's a general layout, general situation as of right now. We do have hills to our north, our east, not so much to the south, that's more further down the valley. Lots of trees around here. We have kind of a grass field over here, which we do have ideas on what we're going to do with that. Now, basic breakdown here. We got a count of 183 people inside our community. 98 males, 85 females. There is 47 families. And what we classified as a family was at least one parent with children. There are 103 kids here at the age of 17 and below. 
we have 49 adult males, 31 adult females. Now weapons, we did not ask specifics. We have a general count of 52 rifles. We got semi-autos, we got lever actions, we got bolt actions. Most of what we have is bolt actions, hunting rifles. There is nine shotguns and 18 pistols. Pistols are mixed caliber. We have everything from 22 long rifle up to 357 and 10 millimeter. Of the rifles that are here, we have one RPK clone with a bump stock on it that the owner did put a spring in the bump stock to assist with it. So we do have a supporting weapon to assist with defense of our community. There is also five M4s and M16s. Four of those came from the two guys from the National Guard that are here. They grabbed them when they left their unit, when they deserted, when everything was falling apart. The one actual M16 came from Officer Friendly. He apparently had a uh, M16A1 hidden inside his camper. There are no belt-fed machine guns, no additional special weapons. That's it. We also have five crossbows, two longbows, and four compound bows. We did not get a count on ammunition or arrows. That's on each of you, your personal information. Now, available tools for the community. We have four good at semi-complete auto tool kits, ten axes, four hatchets, five bow saws, 12 shovels, and that's everything from a D-handle to a long handle, two sledgehammers, four chainsaws, and we have the one front end loader from the, uh, from the uh, Rangers. We got that from their equipment building, which is down the road over this way. Now available supplies. On average, everyone has about four days worth of food. That's not a lot. We're going to be in trouble in less than a week. We got to correct this. Some people have even less. They only have one or two days worth of food. There are a couple that came here with six months worth inside their camper and RVs when they came here. Their plan apparently was to bug out here if anything went bad. They had everything loaded up inside and they came here. The food items that we have, from what uh, we were told, is everything from grocery canned goods to some home canned jar goods, MREs, freeze dried, some dehydrated stuff, and then some general snacks people picked up at convenience stores along the way. So it gives you a basic breakdown on that. Let's you know where we're sitting as a community, what's available. Our major problem right now is food, obviously. We will correct that. We're going to focus primarily on that when we get into what needs to be done. Now for water, we do have the creek over here, which does flow year round according to uh, Ranger Smith. It does need filtering though. There is fish in the stream, but right now there's not as many. Mostly you see them during spawning season when they start heading north upstream here. We do have the two water pumps. And uh, Ranger Smith said there is two changes of filters for each of these pumps in the storage at the Ranger's office. If you get water from the creek, filter it and then boil it. That will preserve water purification chemicals as much as possible. We will have a class on how to do that sometime here, probably when this meeting is about done. 
we'll have uh, Doc Rogers come up here and uh, she will explain how to purify the water so that you're not going to get sick. We don't need people ending up with diarrhea, dehydrating, and then dying on us. That's going to cause even more problems. Now food, it's our first priority that we're going to need. The easiest thing we're going to have for building up a food supply is obviously fishing and trapping small game in the woods around us. The food that is in the store, this questions have been asked about that, that is going to go to the six families and three individuals that have only about a day or two's worth of food. The food that is still left in the store, left in the storeroom, is going to be divided up equally per person from, from that, those groups, and then it will be distributed to them, and then it's on them to keep themselves fed. We are going to be sending out hunting, gathering, and fishing parties every day minimum of six people in these parties so that two people are pulling security four people will be doing the gathering and then everyone will help bring the stuff back to the community we are going to start working on food plots here tomorrow for next year it's too late in the year now for us to plant anything but at each campsite here we'll use some of those hand tools we will dig a food plot. That food plot is for the people at that site for them to grow their own food. We are also going to get the front end loader up over here into the grass field. We're going to plow that up. We're going to start working on building up that uh, soil over there so that next year we can plant some type of crops in there. Now, sanitation. It is highly encouraged from Dr. Rogers, everyone take a shower at least once or twice a week. If we have to go through and make some type of a rotation schedule based off area around the, the camp here, we will do that. But first off, we'll see how it goes, see if everyone can uh, play nice, rotate through there not use up too much hot water we we'll use the honor system at first uh, we do want to tell everyone when you have to relieve yourself doesn't matter if you're taking a leak or taking a dump use one of the restrooms up here or the restrooms down here at the ranger station we are talking about putting in and building a couple more um, Outhouses similar to what's up at the rustic campground. We'll build them down in here somewhere. They will not have the concrete containment vessels underneath them. We're going to have to figure out some other way to keep them from collapsing into the holes. Trash will be collected up and it will be buried every uh, other day down at the equipment shed which is about a mile to the south down the road. Food scraps and paper, that will be gathered up and that will be spread into the ground over here and into your individual food plots as compost, build it up for next year. Now medical, gotta bring this up right away, right after sanitation. We have two people here that are medically trained. We have Doc Rogers, who was an EMT. She brought a bunch of supplies with her when she bugged out and she came here. She and her partner on the ambulance divided up what was in the ambulance when they realized it was too dangerous to do calls anymore. Both of them were going to grab their families and apparently come here. Well, he never showed up at the rally point. So the only one that we have that's you know fully medically trained right now is one EMT. We do have an assistant, Mr. Rogers back there. He is in his 60s. He used to be a combat medic 
in the army back in the day. Between the two of them, they are going to set up a clinic in the store down here in the ranger shack. We are going to need cots for the patients. We're going to use some blankets and pillows which were being sold in the store for the patients if they have to stay there overnight. And we're going to use some of the shelving units as partitions between the cots so that each patient would have their own little private area. We do not have anyone right now that is a surgeon. But uh, Doc Rogers and Doc Richards said they are going to do as much reading on that as they can so that if we get to that point that we have a live birth that needs to be performed or surgery needs to be performed, hopefully they'll be able to handle it. We do ask for donations for medical supplies. If you have extra bandages, medications and that stuff, please give that to uh, Doc Rogers or Doc Richards for use in the clinic. Now, the shelters. We are going to be building shelters here. We've been talking about this. Currently, there are 19 RVs, 14 campers, two vans which are sufficient size to be used as campers. Everybody else is using tents or lean-tos currently or their own personal vehicles. We are going to start work on one-room cabins. We're going to get the wood from west of the road here and also east of the field here. We'll cut down some trees, we'll prep them, cut them into the logs the size we need, and we will start by building cabins on this side here. Since this side of the uh, loop here, we have RVs and campers. We're gonna start with building some camper, or some cabins in here, then we're gonna do them in here, then we'll do them in here. The goal eventually will be everyone will have a cabin to live in. But, our first goal here is that everyone will be inside a cabin before winter. Everyone who's inside a tent or a lean-to or sleeping in their car. We will try, after we get all the cabins up, we'll try expanding. The ranger station down here in Shopit, try to turn that more into a community type building. Now, security. We've talked this over, and we believe that all able-bodied males between the ages of 16 and 60 should be part of the security force for this community. We can't just go off of volunteers. There's not going to be enough. There is going to be marauders. There is going to be people that are going to want to come here. They're going to hurt you. They're going to want to steal your shit. We have to be ready for it. So going off of that 16 to 60, there are 41 adult males that fall in there. We, of this group, 10 of us are military veterans and we have the two National Guardsmen. Now we will take volunteers from females. Adult females between 16 and 60 have to be able-bodied. Right now the current plan is, going by the 41 number, we will divide up into 10 four-man teams. There will be one that will be a five-man. We will do rotations for pulling guard duty. We are going to set up some listening posts, observation posts, a couple guard posts, and some strong points to, if anyone tries coming here, we're going to bleed them as much as possible before they even get close to our community here. Uh, we're talking about building a berm right now along the creek here, going from the hillside down to the roadway. We'll use the front end loader on that. That's going to be secondary though after 
we prep the field over here for growing crops for next year. Now just a quick uh, rundown of who would be in the security here. We do have a retired first sergeant over there. He was in a quartermaster battalion. Um, first Sergeant Jack Meehoff. I'm the next highest rank here. I was a staff sergeant. I was a combat engineer. There is one of my soldiers who I actually went to Iraq with back there, Specialist Eckert. He'll be joining me on my team since we work together. Uh, radios, we have very few. We do have a few of the FRS, GMRS, and a couple Baofangs, and some CBs. But actual handheld that we can use with the teams, we do not have enough to issue one radio off to every team. So we're going to have to rotate the radios for each patrol, each guard position. Other information on security, those of you that uh, fall into the ages for the security team or want to be part of it, we'll go over more info on the specifics. Now, just some general on the day-to-day -day here before I pass stuff off to uh, Doc Rogers. Everyone, we need you to pitch in. There's a lot of work that's going to have to be done to get us ready for the winter. Firewood's going to have to be cut. We've got to get cabins prepared. we got to uh, prepare, gather food, preserve food. We need to help from everyone. Even kids, if you want to help out. It, you know, it would be greatly appreciated. So we're going to have a six-day work week. We're going to have to. The one day off, we're going to do Sundays. That's going to be our rest day. The only ones that will work that day will be the priority jobs and security. We will try to hold uh, chapel services here in the storm shelter, you know, where you are right now. We don't have any pastors, but we do have a, what was it, a lay minister or group minister, something like that. He's back there up in that corner over the, up against the wall. He said he'd be willing to uh, lead Christian services every Sunday. Now in about one month we will hold an election for mayor and the security team will hold an election for who should be the commanding officer. Those positions we figure will be filled for about one year. If we want to adjust the time on that later on we'll figure up a procedure. Now, some people brought up about uh, Ranger Smith taking over at least until that point. He doesn't want to. Okay, he was just a park ranger. He did this for a job. He doesn't see himself being a leader. He is willing to be an advisor slash planner, you know, help us with information on the area and ideas on maybe where we could find stuff. You know, the access points, escape points, the general terrain, that type of stuff. He's going to help out with that. Now, law and order, I'm going to mention this. We need to keep it, okay? Don't steal from anyone. Don't attack anyone. No murders. No rapes. Definitely no diddling kids. I'm going to say right now, we catch someone diddling a kid, they're going to get executed right away as soon as we confirm it. No ifs, no ands, no buts, no begging for mercy, you're a dead man or a dead woman. Plain and simple. And that leads me into my last little point here. You may notice that there is one woman who is not here, her and her daughter. Erica Thompson and her daughter Tony. Now those of you that have talked to her or been around her know that she's extremely jumpy right now and there's really good reason for it. She and her daughter are the only survivors who made it here. Her husband 
and her sons were murdered on the way here. And then Erica and her 10-year-old daughter were, were raped repeatedly until they were able to escape. They got really bad PTSD. No one here has the psychiatric training to help them out. But please, everyone, help them any way you can. They're going to be extra touchy. Don't bring up certain subjects around them. You know, don't bring up that, you know, she needs to find a man and that type of stuff. Guys here, you're single. Don't start hitting on her now. It's not going to turn out too well. And I would not put it past her to put a bullet in someone. As she starts having a flashback if you try. So everyone, please help them out as best you can. Be cautious and realize there's problems there. So uh, I think I'm going to turn stuff over here to Doc Rogers. And uh, she's going to go over some basics on the sanitation and that stuff. On how to um, store your food how to uh, purify your water, how to, uh, the best way for cleaning yourself, to try to cut down on any infections and illnesses. Remember, a single illness inside this community right now can wipe us out completely, just like it used to back in colonial times. So, Doc Rogers, it's now up to you.